continue then with our second study for this season on spiritual warfare. It's a continuation of last week's uh, uh, message. And uh, Lord willing, we're going to focus a little bit more on Psalm 148. Let us pray before we start. Lord, you are the most high. You are the uttermost. You are the only substantial, continual authority. Everything else you have created, and everything and everyone else, you can control. There's nothing, no force, no power that is outside of your control. You are magnificent. You are the very source of life and light and truth and grace and mercy. And we choose this morning to bow our knees before your throne and ask you, Father, please open our minds that we will understand what we have to do in the midst of all of this so-called confusion and opinions, this opinionated world controlled by politics and different ideologies, cultures, and traditions. Open our minds to see the truth that is never and can never be contaminated or affected or be diverted by any of these forces of politics or ideologies or races or philosophies or whatever. Give us minds, Lord, that will focus that we may clearly see what you are teaching us. In your wonderful name. Amen. I think we started with this phrase last week, and that is, God, Jesus, is coming for overcomers. That word you will find in, your, in the New Testament, when it's mentioned about the rapture, or God fetching his people, is fetching overcomers. I cannot stress that enough. There's not overcomers and then uh, another bunch that was trying to overcome and that was uh, intended to overcome or uh, that wasn't so sure about how to overcome or whatever. It's coming for the overcomers. As he defines overcomers. Not as you define or me. He defines what an overcomer is. Okay, now, what do we need to overcome? The Bible teaches us about three things that we need to overcome. The world, the flesh, and the devil. 1 John 2 verse 16 defines what the world is. The world is not something or somebody or people outside there. That's not what the, world, what the Bible defines as the world. He says there, 1 John 2 verse 16 says, The world is the lust of the flesh, which is inside of us. The lust of the eyes, which is inside of us. And the pride of life, which is inside of man. That is what we need to overcome. The flesh... I, me, my, mine. That's what the world is about. It's about me. What I can get out of it, how much I can get out of it, how little I need to pay for it. If I can get it for free, of course. But as much as I can, I want. That greed, that covetousness that we find in all of us. 
flesh in different in different amounts inside of us and the devil yes so now we're talking about the Bible says since the fall that we read of in Genesis chapter 1 of chapter 2 sorry we read there that man embraced the Luciferic nature turned his back on God and embraced the Luciferic nature right so you wonder why we have a war on our hands we've just mentioned what we what needs to be overcome the world our flesh and the devil yes the devil's outside there but we could see what the war is about I already prepared for uh, today some time ago and this morning when I looked for it I thought but let me try and use this way to start and explain if this is the earth what do we find here magic enchantments so no you didn't argue for tall sorcery now magic enchantment and sorcery all right let me not say that afflictions Afflictions, hurts, wickedness. I'm taking time to write these things down for a reason. Wickedness, death. Woe, doubt, there's a lot of doubt in society, especially these days, insecurities, insecurities, suicide, murder, Murders, hatred, depression, I hope I've touched something, mentioned something that you might be struggling with by now, cancer, I mean there's so many sicknesses but since understand it a little bit better unemployment unemployment divorce <coughs> unhappiness sicknesses of whatever sort War, war in the sense of one country or one nation attacking another one, shooting and killing and burning and blowing up and so on. And fights, whether it's in marriages, between groups, ethnical groups, things all right let me not say that but anyway in the midst of all of this the word says we have truth this is the planet we have truth and mercy 
that you can read in the Bible. Truth and mercy always comes together. With truth we find grace and mercy and so on. Right. Truth and mercy is abstract. In the midst of all of this, who do we find here? Yud, hey, ba, hey. The one who exists, the one who is self-sufficient, the one who is invisible. Okay. Now, that's why he says we need to seek him. The Bible speaks a lot about seeking him. Until we find him. There's people that are forever seeking him and they were finding him because they seek, seek him on their terms. Right. Now, where does this fit in with the gospel? We can fill the, that circle with more things that describes this creation, this world that we live in. Here, in the midst of this, we find, I'm just going to take God out here, if I may, Lord, any war, any law, uh, any war always has to do with allies, bondgenoten. <coughs> God has got, got allies in the world here, which is truth. Now, that we can explain in many, using many words. Uh, yeah, truth and mercy. Let me just write the M there for mercy. But one of God's main allies is Lucifer. in a certain sense. <clears throat> Lucifer's allies is that he works through sin which is rebellion against God which he finds in the, and let me write, use another color here, which we find in man's reason and feelings. So Lucifer, he capitalizes here on that reason we have learned through our studies the Bible talks about the heart and many times when they, it talks about that word heart it is the love heart and all right and then we find the lebab heart Feelings, which comes out mostly out of our conscious and our unconscious being, and our reason is much more conscious. Oh, is that the right word? Consciousness. Right. Sometimes we experience that, or let me put it first, put it this way, the word teaches us that 
Feelings always follow reason. That is a fact in the Word of God. But sometimes we experience it as if feelings has taken the lead. And my reasoning follows my feelings. That is because our hearts, the Bible says, is like a sea. There's depths in right down inside of us in our labar being. And the Lord talks about our seas. He's got words for that to explain it down, deep down in us. There's many times a reasoning down there going on that we're not aware of. A reasoning that goes down deep in your spirit. And what pops out, out is the feeling. The way out always remains the same. The, the recipe is very simple. The way out is always through your reason. There's no other way out. Where we need to use our reasoning, reason where we make choices, and God teaches us how to reason so that it will be our escape or deliverance. So we don't stay in that captivity of all of this. So the way out of each one of these things is through our reason. For some reason, I find that Christians expect a supernatural intervention from somewhere from God to come in and to, to deliver them. But for, for reason to be the escape way and the gateway to freedom from and in my situation, I need to really have the truth because it's only truth that will open the door. Not your own doctrine, even if you call that truth, or our own doctrine, whether it's a church's doctrine or, or whoever. If it's not God's truth, a door will not open. We need a secret door, if you can say the secret door, which is called the sacrifice, to open. So that we can find a way of escape and deliverance. The word says God will always and always supplies the way of escape. Now in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, we're not going to turn there, I'm just going to remind you about the scripture there. There the word talks about, he says, Paul says there, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So here, what we find here, yes, some of them are influences of magic or enchantments or sorcery, uh, sometimes exercised by people, physical people that you know that are busy doing that, or it comes through the air, influences that influence people and a group of people and so on, or it comes definitely through individuals or through a nation, or whatever. So sometimes the agent is visible and sometimes invisible, but it always capitalizes, always capitalizes upon the sin which is rebellion against God. Many of the Christian doctrines, which is called Christian doctrines, sometimes feeds this rebellion. Because it is truth that are taught that has been crooked. Right. Let me just do, say that. Then Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, We do not, do not fight against uh, flesh and blood, but against <clears throat> principalities. Right here. 
principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places, places. Right. We try and put everything on one image so that we can make out. Otherwise it's so confusing. We get enchantments here and you get rebellion and wars there and in between you get principalities and powers and it seems so confusing. God is not confused, it's us that are confused. <clears throat> All of these Luciferic agents are abstract. They need, all right, they come as influences as well, but mostly they work through here, through the sin and the fallen nature and the rebellion of people. All right. Principalities are those forces that will always fight and get you not to make him the Aleph. Not to acknowledge him that he is in the midst of the situation or that he is not the first person and the only important person in this equation. So the principalities will use any way to get your, your focus off <coughs> him being in the midst and him being in absolute control, him being sovereign. Many doctrines these days suggests, actually teaches, that he is not in control the devil and Lucifer and his agents is in control here. God is there, staying there somewhere with his, with his fingers in his mouth. He, he can't do anything here because for some reason these forces has pushed God to one corner. And he was pushed into a corner. God has, has, hasn't lost any form of control. Nowhere. Okay, that is what principalities would try, try and the message they would try to get over. If they can get that over, as I said, <coughs> working as influencers, but eventually working through people and capitalizing on the rebellious nature of man, <coughs> they will do that. Powers. What does powers speak of? Powers speak of uh, details, procedures to regulate and control. And I'm giving you the Hebrew explanation of powers. That's why you find among Christians many times the the reasoning, the details is not important. Detail is not important. Any kingdom that I know, detail is very important. I cannot do in this country what I want to, what I think I should do. In this, all the COVID regulations, I can't do what I want to do, what I think. I must fall in the what do they call it? Regime or what? Protocol. I need to follow the protocol. Otherwise I get into trouble. So powers try to get us off saying, ah, oh, don't worry about the detail of God's word. God loves you. God loves you. Don't worry about the detail. Just do what you like. Just Keep God at peace. Just keep him happy. For some reason they think they can keep God happy with a bowl of rice or something. 
and do what they want to do. And now they just worship him. Then you hear these down say Rasta. Then I can do what I want to do. No. That's powers working. Lucifer's powers. Against rulers of the darkness. What darkness is he talking about? That with darkness is Chosek. Chosek darkness. What do we find in Chosek darkness? Here we find it. Chosek darkness. Afflictions, hurt, wickedness, death, woe. That is Chosek darkness. Okay. So, rulers of the darkness of this world. So we do not fight with human beings, really, but it's what these powers are doing through the human beings. So we're actually talking about an, an abstract effect, an abstract attack, and an abstract effect. Yes, coming through... Uh, many times through an agent of flesh and blood, but that's not the problem, Paul says. It's the origin that is important. And then he says, spiritual wickedness in high places. What is spiritual wickedness? And I wish I could shout that to the Christian church. Wickedness in Hebrew means not acknowledging his sovereignty. That is wicked. Within my quoting spiritual and, and scriptural verses, if I deny in my speaking and in my preaching the sovereignty of God and what sovereignty means, I am wicked. Wickedness is not to acknowledge Him in your doctrine, in your thinking, your speaking, in your acting, that he is sovereign. Spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's any influence or force or power or principality that works on this earth through men, through people, through leaders, any, any thought that God is not sovereign. Any impression that God is not sovereign. Now do you remember that when we studied about the covenant, or the covenant, Jesus confirmed that God has got a covenant with man. Okay. Brit. If you remember we, when we had a look at covenant, part of a, of a covenant, part of the covenant that we have with him is your enemies are my enemies. My enemies are your enemies. Okay. So God's enemies, Lord's enemy is mainly is Lucifer with his, with his rebellion. In between here, I figure, here I am, I or me. So God's enemies are my enemies. The, if, if we have any other enemy that you identify and that you fight, you are out of order. Okay. God defines the enemy and your or my covenant relationship with him includes me in that, in that covenant that my enemies are your enemies. All right. And remember we said it is a Brit covenant and Mila. Remember? The covenant that God has with us and the second thing that God has with us is a circumcision. Uh, we, have a, we have a covenantal and a circumcisional relationship. 
that's Old Testament and New Testament. So ons het a, a, a verbondsverhouding met hom, en ons het a besnijdenis, die verbond sluit die besnijdenis in. So, in this relationship that I have with him, I must consistently allow him to circumcise my heart. Why? Because these things has got influences on my life and has got uh, uh, form, uh, forms allies in my heart with, who, with which he can connect. In any war, allies must be cut off and then the, the focus is headquarters. Now, uh, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 5. I've got very little time, very little time today. That was my agreement with my wife. So that we can have a fellowship afterwards, which is just as part of the Christian, the body of Christ. Right, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly. Now take note. In the mount, out of the midst of the fire. Out of the midst of the cloud. And out of the midst of the thick darkness with a great voice and he added no more and he wrote them in two tables of stone they delivered them unto me verse 23 and it came to pass when he heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness and so on so let us just take this side of our uh, board and write down what we've, uh, what we've read here we find God, then we find fire around him. Around the fire we find a cloud, is that right? Around the cloud we find uh, thick darkness. Around the thick darkness, we read there in verse 23. All right, I can know that it's great. Thank you, Mr. The reason why I write there's dark there and darkness here is because the, it's two different Hebrew words, it's two different uh, levels that he's talking here about. And as you say, here, as you say, there's a voice coming out there. So what we find here in the midst, we cannot go to the other portions of scripture, I'm just giving you a summary here. What we find in the midst here is <clears throat> the written word and we find here the oral word. What we do find as well is lightning Yes, the fire speaks about the lightning as well But that's what we find Right. So around the Word of God, as we sit here, the Word of God is covered. We're talking about spiritual coverings. Spraat van die woord van die Heere. So spraat van woord van die Heere. Praat van dit wat leven bring. Dit wil kracht bring. Dit wat 
<coughs> jo aanraak, is bedek, dis nie net waar nie, dis bedek, dier die geestelike kleer, verskillende kleete, om ons, om dit, om die woord, om God, right, this word fire is the word ish, and it refers to the word ish, Right. Ash is fire. It is Aleph in Shun. And Ish is refers to the spirit of man. <coughs> the spirit of man. Man's spirit. Comes from there. Comes from the fire, a spark. From God himself. In you, you've got a spark of fire comes from your father and my father. That is what gives the life. That makes the heart, literally the heart, that electrical fire that makes the heart to beat. Right. Then we have the cloud or none. Let me write it down here. A W N A. I don't know. Yes. N A W N. Or none. Let me just write you the thick darkness. Is the word Arafel. And the word Arafel is connected to the word Ophel. And then the word darkness is kosek, kosek. Right. You understand now why we look at this. Onan. We'll take you to the word anan. And that means. Ni flow word, ni want jelas ani verstaan ni. Ek het nie verstaan nie, maar it means, van aan means, magic, magic, it means enchanter, it means sorcerer, sorcerer, Gosek, I said, means for instance this, Gosek, Aravel, so it will eventually, Gosek, Aravel and Ophel, there is an interworking here. All right, between all of them, but Aravel is when you turn from the light. You and I do that many times. We turn from the light. God tells you, His Spirit tells you, or His Word tells you, this is not right. You're not, your attitude is not right. Your the words that you've used is not right. Your spirit is not right. Your behavior is not right. You are not right. What do we do? We usually turn our, our backs towards that voice. That voice, our old voice. Turn our backs to it. And then, oh, hell darkness covers us. And oh, hell darkness results in depression, obscurity. It leaves man with a lot of doubts, insecurities. Many times, this is where Christians commit suicide. 
don't understand what happened with this person. How did they get there? How is it possible? It is very possible because we do not fight flesh and blood. We are fighting spiritual, spiritual forces, which is ancient warriors, using every means to capitalize on the sin inside of you and me. The rebellion that we have inside of us because we all have rebellion against God inside of us. Yes, we've grown a lot out of it <clears throat> as we grow spiritually. That's why we need to grow and grow and grow and grow. How do we grow? By real truth, only truth. If it's mixed with untruth, we do not grow as strong as we need to grow. And we cannot resist uh, the onslaughts of the enemy. All right. So, so what we can write in here to make it more complicated is magic. And there's my wife. I'm not telling I'm giving you a testimony. Ten years ago, before the church, before we realized that the leaders, some of the leaders were conniving to get out of, us out of the organization, because we were a threat to them. I, I, one night I, I jumped up, literally, literally, I said, save my fellow And she said, what's, what's wrong, what's wrong? I said to her, I was looking in the face of a Sangoma. I said to her the other day, I can still uh, describe to her the face. And I said to her, there is witchcraft going on. in the church. What is witchcraft? Some gomas dancing around the fire, drinking blood of men, of humans? No, 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 no. The word says rebellion is witchcraft. So Samuel said that to Saul. So witchcraft or craft comes in many forms. Any rebellion against God enchants us, if we continue to do that. It enchants us and will take you to a place where, spiritually, where you never thought you'll get to. So, and Paul says there in Galatians chapter 5, so it's 5 or 6, I'm not sure now, but he talks about the, the fruit of the flesh. He says, witchcraft. He speaks to the church in Galatia and he says to them, there is fruit of witchcraft among you. <coughs> so witchcraft is not always the black hoods. So magic, enchantment, I'm not going to write to save time. Magic, enchantment, sorcery. We can write that in here. We said here, we can talk in, or we can write in here as well. Uh, insecurities, depression, suicide, uh, doubts. Write that in here. What does the word tell us there? It says, in the midst of that, the word was speaking. In the midst. So here, in the very midst of all of this, in all things give thanks. Uh, bless him and thank him for all things. In the midst of all this, is God. So let's let's turn to Psalm 148. Hundred and forty eight. 
Now I'm taking time to write this down again, once again. Ha, le, lu, ya. Ha, le, lu, ya. So what does this mean? It means give breath, breath, and we said it means lab, labab, labab, yud, and hey. Your reason and your feelings, with breath, your reason, your feelings must be worshipped to him. So it doesn't mean that we walk around in our reason, our worship, in our reason, in our hearts all the time saying, bless you Lord, thank you Lord, bless you Lord, thank you Lord, no. My whole being must be one of submission, humility, thankfulness, acknowledging Him as in the midst of where I am now, this, this Most High is my Lord and my God. That is, ha le lu ya. Grijp ons wat ek sê. Grijp ons. Vers 13, we started last week. I'm skipping a few things. <coughs> Let them praise the name of the Lord. Alright, praise. Hallelujah. And we said, the word praise in that psalm and the word hallelujah comes from the word halal, the root word, Ha, lal. Okay, and it talks about the North Star principle that we've mentioned, shared with you. Okay. Uh, where did I write that? Which I don't remind you about, and that is that. Uh, uh, It, it talks about hallelujah and halal talks about to give in marriage. It means to give in marriage. We talk about the rapture. Christians are fighting of when is the date for the rapture. And they don't even teach people how to get into, ma into a marriage relationship with him. How stupid can that be? We must get into a marriage relationship with him. How? With my reason and my heart all the time. Connected to him. In submission, willing submission, in worship, acknowledging him as sovereign where I am. All right. It means as well, to be clear of sound and color. To be clear of sound and color. We cannot get away. The sound that comes from your heart gives way where your loyalty lies. People try and bluff one another. Christians in the religious world Try and bluff one another. Hello, brother, how are you? Oh, Lord, bless you. I love you so much. <laughs> Meanwhile, they put the knife in your back. You could do that with human beings, but we're talking about <coughs> our problem is with the spirit world. They see exactly where you stand. Because your heart and my heart is continuously emanating, sending forth uh, colors and waves and noises and sounds, uh, proof 
proving where your loyalty is. So, <laughs> our religious words and voice and tone of voice is not, is not going to help you. You might bluff a few individuals around you, but that's it. You're not going to live in a high, on a higher, higher plane of existence. You are not going to live an overcoming life. And I'm not going to do that. If that is what I do. And color, if that's what it means, I didn't write it. I didn't invent what I'm sharing with you. Halal means to be clear of sound and color. Color, we've learned. There are four basic colors in the covenants. We all still find it in the Hebrew covenants today, which is red. Talks about the uh, <clears throat> servant covenant, yellow, which talks about the uh, friendship covenant, blue, which talks about inheritance and governance and, and so on. And then here, red and blue together is purple. Or you can white, white, uh, white light. So your type of relationship that you have with him is reflected whether we want to know it or not by sound and color. Ons is uitgevang. Ons is uitgevang. The type of fears that we get among Christians these days, paranoid fears, is shameful. I can't imagine that people that confess to be Christians can be so controlled by the forces. The forces, the magic, the enchantments, the sorceries that comes through the media. You don't need to be fearful wherever you are. If your focus, my focus is on him. All right. Verse 13. Let them praise Allah. The name of the Lord, for his name alone, which means solitary, solit solitary is excellent. <coughs> Sahab means to be lofty, inaccessible. His name is inaccessible. It means defense, secure, and it means difficult to comprehend. His name is excellent. As was ons by, by omskar, met ander woorde, by sy naamskar, is dit geestelike oorafvoering in zichzelf. Maar nou neuk die christene, en dit neuk nou hier rond, en speel met God, Waarom jullie niet moeten spelen? Nie. Plaats dat die, die antwoord is zo so eenvoudig. Kom bij Jere uit. En skaar je bij die Jere. En skuil bij hom. Nee, maar zo so graag ik iets doen. Zo so graag ik iets doen. Dan moet ik vlak me lekker voel. Because the enemy of the rebellious. A force in the universe, Lucifer, capitalizes on man's desire to experience power and control and so on. And he capitalizes on that. He allows him to write books about it, have courses about it. So that man can go out there and walk around and think he can control ancient forces. 
die grootste grap in my leven wat ek nog gehoor het. Right, and he says here, His glory is above the earth. If we can continue with this <coughs> over busy drawing, above, here we find the heavens around, and above the heavens, above the heavens, what do we find? Glory. Yud glory. Specific glory. There are many glories. The bride that will be raptured will be enclosed in glories. Like you and I are enclosed at this very moment. You are clothed in one of these not one of these glories, with these glories, depending upon what you do in your heart and mind. Christians want authority. Authority you only get there. Then this authority is under Yah. Yah's authority. Because you got there because you've learned to submit unto him. <clears throat> Turn with me quickly. Keep your place there to Psalm chapter 8. Now we're going to go talk very, very fast and very quick. <laughs> Psalms chapter 8. Lord, our Lord. How excellent. One, once again, same word. Is thy name in all the earth. In all the earth. Who has set thy glory. Yut. Glory. Above the heavens. <coughs> right. Then verse 2. So here we read about the Yut glory. Which is once again above the heavens. Right, here we read. <coughs> Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Now, where do we find babes and sucklings? Here we've learned from the Word of God the poor, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow corner. Whether you are poor or whether you feel stranger in your circumstances at the moment, or fatherless, or, or a, 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 a widow, in all of those circumstances you feel poor. You feel weak, you feel incapable, you feel overwhelmed. Okay, you feel like a baby, you feel like a suckling. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Because the great secret of an overcomer is that he knows he's a babe, a baby and a suckling. He knows. He has no power in himself. He knows he's absolutely dependent upon the mother or the father. That is an overcomer. Because that, if that is the attitude I have, I experience overcoming power. So here we see, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, as thou ordained strength. What strength is that? Oz, strength. Oz, strength. Out of your mouth, if you acknowledge how poor and weak you are, in the midst of all of this, how small we are. If we acknowledge that, there is power in your mouth if you submit to him. Where does the power come from? It, mean, it means you will open your eyes so you can see the truth 
Because we started off with this message today and we said that truth and mercy is everywhere. His name is called truth. He is called the way, the truth and the life. Okay. So this word Oz, this, this strength that lies in the mouth of the babe and a suckling, that word truth means inaccessible. I read it down somewhere. It means inaccessible, invincible, impenetrable. Now you tell me, Christians, I mostly meet Christians that are like porcupines. They are so darted, full of darts of untruth and misleading and deception. They look like porcupines. And I seldomly meet Christians that walks around in strength, not self-confident, not talking about confidence in themselves, I'm talking about in his confidence. Impenetrable, invincible, inaccessible by the influences that come through the air and through the masses of people, through the social media and the whatever media they call it these days, media and through the internet and through whatever and uh, through other people's mouths and actions, they seem to walk around with targets on their backs. They don't seem to be impenetrable and invincible and inaccessible. But it will only lie in the strength of the mouth of the babe and a suckling. What does it mean in the mouth? Does it mean they need to speak around? No. It starts with thoughts. Your words starts with thoughts. So it means there is power in your thoughts and in our reasoning, in our thinking, and eventually it will affect your feelings. So your feelings will not be up, and then your feelings is down. Then feelings up, feelings down. Now COVID is under control, now the second wave comes. Then the first wave comes, then the sixth wave comes. This thing's not going to end. I'll be surprised if it ends. I don't think it will end. Boosters upon boosters upon boosters upon boosters. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe something new. Most probably something else as well. Expect that. Because the Bible tells us that. In the midst of all of this, that fear do not penetrate makes you impenetrable, invincible, inaccessible. The enemy, it says here, because of thine enemies, thine, remember his enemies is your enemies, and your enemies is his enemies, we are in a covenant, because of thine enemies, that thou might have stole the enemy and the avenger. That word enemy, tsarar. Tsarar. I see a lot of reason here. Zarar. What does that mean? Do you remember? It means to be hooked and hunted. So whatever comes through the news or through the atmosphere or through somebody else that's being eventually, that was eventually organized and um, uh, motivated by Lucifer with his principalities or powers or rulers or spiritual wickedness and that is focused on you through his agents and people and news the motive is to get a hook into your mind and in your feeling, in your reasoning 
so that you can be controlled and governed. Like when they've done that with an enemy that they've conquered and they put a hook into the uh, cheek or through the lips and literally and led them, control them. Hooks and being hunted comes through the media all the time and Christians and people and churches and whatever to hook you, to hunt you till they track you down so that you can become enslaved and the avenger that word avenger means to revenge bitterness, murmuring, unforgiveness, grudges, unforg yeah, unforgiveness. Revenge, bitterness, moaning, murmuring, unforgiveness. All right. This is what, uh, what life consists. Sometimes we have to fight against being unforgiving, against bitterness, to revenge, whatever way of revenge, what has been done, unforgivenesses. All right, comes through people, through circumstances, through things that we must uh, fight because they want to put a hook in you and guide you, lead you, control you. But where does the strength lie? In your reasoning, in your thoughts. What is it? What is it? It is, he says, remember now, if you read those two verses together, the secret lies in the glory above the heavens. This huge glory is the word praise. <clears throat> the word praise. It means to radiate life, radiate youth. So outside of the heavens, there's a realm at this very moment of praise and thanksgiving. We are down here on earth. There's heaven and then outside of heaven. Under that canopy, we are walking and we choose to bless him and to thank him because we see him in the midst of it. What happens? There's a connection a net connecting point outside of the heavens that connects with you and there's a current flowing a current of, of strength and power flowing in the spirit world distance is nothing nothing so it doesn't seem oh, it's about so many thousand kilometers how can it happen that is what happens in the spirit world. If you say, thank you, bless you, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. Thank you for this thing. Lord, behind all of this, eventually, they had to get permission from you. So I bless you. You've allowed it because you saw it will make me strong. I trust you in the midst of the circumstance. Immediately there's shoo, shoo. radiation taking place. Boom, 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 boom. Talks that word that word praise is actually the word tila. To eventually bring it to halal. That word praise in verse 14 of sorry, I'm back to this chapter here in uh, Psalm 38, 48. Uh, that word uh, praise means as well radiate light it means to shoot out arrows and missiles so this is where the spiritual warfare comes in your eyes are not upon is it that name is it the spirit of evil is it the spirit of zuma is it the spirit of uh, antichrist is it the communist spirit whatever spirit it is get yourself busy that's what the enemy wants takes your eyes off Focus on him, 
he's in the midst of this, I'm going to focus my energy and everything upon him. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to thank him. Out of my heart, I want to do it from my heart. I want to acknowledge him. Whether he's going to change the situation or circumstance, that's irrelevant. Because he's not changing. He's still the same. So that's what I'm going to do. And what happens? Arrows of light is being shot out. Missiles. And what is important, verse 14. Oh, verse 14. Let me just say this one thing. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel. People near and to him praise ye the Lord. Right. <clears throat> Give me just three minutes. Verse 14. He also exalted he. He exalteth the horn of his people. That word horn, queren. Horn. The horn, he exalts the horn of his people. No matter what, let's leave the spelling. Right, horn. In Hebrew, it means a projecting horn. It means a cornet, yeah? a trumpet. So, what is this horn? He says, this horn, verse 14, he says, is the praise of his people. What is praise, thanksgiving, and so on. Are you walking around without horns? We need horns. You need, and I need, horns. That would horn in the Hebrew refers to elephant tusks. I've got a book here with old hieroglyphics, photos of hieroglyphics. Yeah. This print is what I can they've discovered of Shem, son of Noah. What does Shem mean? I see the name. Shem of Noah that killed and destroyed Nimrod, the man of flesh, the first antichrist that wanted to rule, have one world rule, Nimrod. So Shem literally conquered Nimrod and destroyed him and killed him. And how is Shem uh, portrayed in the hieroglyphics? It is a man walking with enormous elephant trunks or tusks. Not trunks, tr tusks. All right, why? Because he saw yod hei hei, the one who is invisible, the one who is absolutely present and in control. He saw him in the midst of his life. He had a life of worship and praise and thanksgiving. Therefore, he could conquer Nimrod. And me, and you. If somebody would portray him, and draw a picture of you. How long? How tall? How long? Will your elephant tusks be? Of thanksgiving and praise. <coughs> or do we have little things there that looks like teeth that needs, you know, like they, at the dentist these days, they put the uh, braces on it. Christians are walking around with just little, so clean eight groeisokies. 
that the, that the dentists want to cut out because it looks awful. <clears throat> or are you and I walking around with elephant tusks? What is elephant tusk? You use, what is it used for? I Google it. To pick up and to move things. Obstacles. It is used for defense and offense. Defense and offensive weapon. It's used to get food and water. Water? Sometimes they need to scrape the surface to get to the water. There is pushing power in the tusks. So in your thanksgiving, your focus is not on what I've said. Your or my focus in thanksgiving, Shem is unto him. You're focusing on him, irrespective of the circumstance and whether the circumstance is changing or not. What happens while I'm doing that? While I'm doing that, he feeds me, he waters me, and offensive and defensive action is taking place. Things are moved that needs to be moved, whether it's obstacles or whatever. That word queren que, que means to radiate light, to shoot arrows. It also means corner elevation. Corner? Which corner are you? Which corner are you? Which corner are you? Each one of us are in a specific corner. In some areas in our lives. God wants to elevate you. So you can live on a higher plane. Right there, where you are. How? Through tasks. Your own tasks. So if you are not elevated above, it doesn't mean that that situation or thing is going to necessarily going to uh, d um, disappear. It means you'll be elevated and that thing will not control you. Well, the hunt you in your mind, your heart, all the time. He says, the horn of praise is to them that are near him. What does that word near mean? It means to bring near, near by kissing him, touching him. Affection. It means the center. The center, Mr. Fainter. Mr. and Mrs. Fainter, the center. Where will you find, and where will you find the horn of praise and thanksgiving? In the center where you are. Among hatred, depression, hurt, wickedness, sorcery, magic, enchantments, doubt, insecurities, suicide, and murder. Right, in closing, the enemy forces has no chance to control our lives, except if we are not confused what the battle is. If you know what the battle is, you will not be confused. If you know what the battle plan is, you will not be confused. You must know where the battlefield lies. You must know, and I must know, who is the enemy. I must know and identify the allies of the enemies and of God. We must know who we are. We are in covenant with Him. The covenant rests on faithfulness. Is that what I say? That's what Berit means. The covenant that you have with Him rests on faithfulness. Being faithful to Him. He is faithful. We will not be confused 
if you are not confused what your weapons are, and if you and I will not exercise ourselves to be well trained in this warfare. He is coming for his overcomers, not for those who has worked out exactly the day and date, the hour and the minute when he's coming. He is not coming for losers. He is not coming for those that are victims of their circumstances. Do you hear me? He is not coming for those who are victims of their circumstances or their health condition, whatever. He is for those, he is coming for those who live TNL <laughs> this week. <coughs> Remember I said last week TNL. It had such an impression on Lejo in Cairo, who was here. Misha says, they wrote it and put it up in the room, or what? Yeah. They wrote it, on big on a placard, put it in the room, TNL. And they were teaching one another about TNL. The next level. Among the Santon boys, apparently that's what they are talking about. Among God's children, they talk about it, but they not live there. That is where a higher plane of existence, TNL, the next level. Right, let's pray. Lord, blessed be your excellent name, who has set thy glory of you and thanksgiving and praise above the heavens. Thank you, Lord, that you lift up the horn of praise of your people. Bless your great name. Lord, rise up, we pray, and let your enemies be scattered in our own lives by your radiating, radiating life and light thanksgiving and praise unto you for who you are in the situation where we are in Jesus name Amen